Hail. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast, Stop Crying Poser, greatest podcast known to man, as voted by you guys. Barry McCock and her curlsy guy just... Kyle, Fat Res, Day Day, Cam, Guy, just Bitcoin, Carbs and Curbs, Fitnoid. I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in live. It has been a roller coaster of a day so far. Um, you guys know I get pretty easily stressed out, especially with computer issues. So the plan today was I found a way to connect my skateboarding camera, my DSLR, Canon SL2. I found a way to connect that to the computer so that we could stream in, in like HD, you know, like blurry background. I wouldn't be so blurry from my old shitty Logitech uh, webcam. So that was uh, that was the plan. I plugged it in and uh, we ran into nothing but technical problems. I, for whatever reason, I downloaded the the software to where the webcam, to where the DSLR can work as the webcam via just the USB cable. I'm like, okay, cool, nice. Uh, so that's what the goal, that was the goal. <laughs> that's what we wanted to happen. It's not, it's not how it happened. So for whatever reason, the shutter speed, uh, when the camera's plugged in, I can't change shutter speed or ISO. I can't touch the camera at all because apparently the camera is, in its own words, busy and i just set up the camera in the other room the exact same way on arguably a much 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 shittier computer the computer in there cost like 200 dollars, like everything everything in it i'm not saying like oh the the actual you mean the little cpu that little square no the entire thing graphics card tower motherboard everything power supply all of it add up all of it, it's 200 dollars. it's the shittiest computer because there was a time when my other computer broke and i said you know what i have this computer in my living room all i use it for is streaming me shirtless breaking tables talking to a camera and i use it to uh to stream like ufc or sport sporting events i can't get why would i ever need a fancy computer in there well Turns out that maybe one day I would like to stream a high quality video, which I didn't think of that back when I got that computer anyways. So uh, it worked in there. No problems. Okay, I wouldn't say no problems. A, a, a ton of problems. A ton of problems. But we got it to work. Can I run uh, a webcam and a DSLR on that computer at once? No, because then everything freezes and it says 100% capacity no memory whatever fuck that shit so i say you know what man i'll bring it all in here i'll get it moving in here we'll boot up in my little office room this is where i do my skateboarding editing and stuff like that so i bring it in here camera's busy doesn't work then the program that i stream uh like what i'm using right now is called obs open broadcast software i believe that's what it stands for something like that and i uh, plug it in doesn't work because I can't get the brightness to change. I can't manually change the brightness and then I can't I couldn't even well listen I can't change the brightness on the computer. I walk up to the camera doo -doo 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 -doo. I start flipping switches. I can't change ISO. I can't change sh shutter speed I'm just completely fucked. So we went back to the regular webcam and guess what happened? My OBS is completely fucked. Everything was upside down. Nothing works at all. So It's been a bit of an annoying day. Oh, yeah <laughs> Did I mention in the middle of all that, it started raining in my backyard. There was no schedule for rain. I looked at my phone. It said, oh, yeah, uh, we lied yesterday. It is raining. So I had to run out there. I had to quickly put a tarp on my mini ramp, which will be destroyed. And I was mentioning this during the pre-show of this podcast. You guys can also tune in live to watch this podcast every single Friday, right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. We're about 45 minutes late today. I run out there, I put the tarp on it, and uh, man, just everything's falling apart. By the way, where I live at, Las Vegas, Nevada, in the middle of the Mojave Desert, the most barren wasteland in the entire United States, um, so much so, I mentioned earlier, that there was so little rainfall and there was so little water here that we built, we dammed up the most powerful river in the country, the Colorado River, put a dam in front of it so that we could supply water 
to people who wanted to live here because there's so few water. They're like, there's so little water, no rainfall. Until that was, let me, let me type it in. What year? Let me tell you what year, what year Hoover Dam? So 1931, we made that dam in 1931. What they didn't know about Las Vegas was that in 2024, a lonely skateboarder would try to build a skateboard ramp in his backyard. If they would have known what they know now in 1931, that I would create a ramp, they would have prepared for the, the rainiest season in the history of the United States. If, if only they had known that 90 years later, I would build a mini ramp for skateboarding in my backyard, they would have never built Hoover Dam because we we have so much water now. And it all they had to do, all, all I had to do in 1931, all I had to do, I, if I would have made a ramp then and blessed this, this landscape with so much water, with the amount of water that we're getting today, it wouldn't be called a desert. It would be called, it, it, it would be Florida. It'd be called Las Vegas Swamp if I had gone back 90 years and built a skateboarding ramp. But right now, but now, but now, we have, we have, we have records here. Like, oh, it's been 900 days since the last rainfall. How much rain fell that day? Ah, a quarter of an inch. Like that, those are real statistics that happen. Like I've been, I've been living here my whole life. I, you go, you turn on the news. They say, well, today is our 900th day of no water. And I go, oh wow, cool. I mean, maybe somebody should go there and build a skateboard ramp and put an end to this. This year, it has rained every four days since the moment I went to Home Depot. The the second I walked into Home Depot. <laughs> Also, like, I, I feel guilty, too, because we have people that live in the sewer systems that have been constantly just blasted with rainfall and flash floods. I don't know how many people I've killed because I decided to build a ramp. It's been raining every motherfucking day since the second I walked into Home Depot. <sighs> All right. So let's get into our podcast. Have we got that out of our systems? Okay, good. So, um, I talked a little bit yesterday. I was in the backyard lifting weights and uh, I've been streaming me lifting weights because I feel like I can listen to music when I'm lifting weights or I can turn on my Twitch stream and makes the time go by faster when I can chat with people online and I have the text-to-speech going. So I'm lifting weights and you guys are like, ah, Ninja Lifestyle is a pussy, LOL. And then it says it, says it out loud and shit like that. We just have fun out there. I think we had a great time. But someone asked me, they said, do you have any more cake muscle decks? I want to buy one. And I went, <laughs> what perfect timing you have to want to support my brand now that it is completely in the trash. What, what great timing. Because I was under the impression that you had five fucking years to support your favorite YouTuber or just, you know, just a guy trying to, trying to provide uh, affordable skate products to the the people that want to buy skateboards here's my thing and i've bitched about this all the time i had a company that i created called cake muscle i spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars uh you know getting boards printed shipped buying boxes learning how the postage system works learning how to set up inventory i had a rack in my front in my living room like when i first started selling decks they were all stacked on the carpet then i bought a rack and i organized them by size and design and it went really good for a while because I was selling decks for uh, a whopping $35, I think. A skateboard deck was $35. And the reason that I charged $35 is because I was paying, nah, I don't remember what I was paying. I was probably paying like 25, 26 bucks for a deck. And then I turn it around and then I charge you guys 35 bucks. So I, I make 10 bucks off the deck. You get an affordable deck because at that time at the skate shop, the decks were $65. Now you think to yourself, well, you're selling a high quality skateboard, right? Because I was getting mine from the same manufacturer and distributor as like Plan B, Baker. They all come from the same place, either Canada or Mexico. All skateboards basically come from the same place. Maybe these days, China. Uh, you know, a skateboard is a skateboard. It's a piece of wood. 
a lot of people get hung up on like the quality of the skateboard ba but basically if you get if you get a skateboard that's not that doesn't say walmart on it it's probably going to be okay right and i was getting mine from a very nice trip distributor and i noticed skateboarders i noticed something about all my competitors we were all getting our wood from the same manufacturer distributor but for some weird reason i was able to sell the skateboards for $35 and uh, everyone else was still selling those for $65, $70. Right now you can go on the Baker website, you can buy a T-Funk board, your favorite skater for $95. <laughs> Great, and, and here's my thing. People say, yeah, yeah, I was gonna buy one of your skateboard decks, but I, you know, I just never got around to it. Okay, cool, but you did buy skateboard decks, right? You did, you remained, you were skateboarding, were you not? Okay, so not only did you choose not to support me, you chose to make some guy, some guy that runs uh, Deluxe, you chose to make him more of a millionaire while making yourself more broke. When you could have supported my skateboarding company, which would give me $10, give you the exact same quality skateboard, and you would save money, and I would make money, and that millionaire over there that runs these, these other skateboarding companies, they would be just fine too because they already have a million dollars. So the frustration for me is like, what what more Like, what more can I do? I gotta give away free skateboards for, for anyone to kind of be interested. And um, I, guess, I guess I just get a little testy on the subject when someone's like, well, yeah, I was gonna buy one, but I wanna buy one now. And I go, well, now? Now, N now there are none. Now it's too late, there is no now. I don't have anything. I have nothing because you waited until now. Had, had you have supported, also the other thing that bothers me is all the people that said they would buy one, that want to buy one. The, the dog skateboard deck, if you guys remember, uh, my subscribers, my YouTube friends, my Twitch friends, I told everyone send me a picture of your dog. I will put your dog's face on a skateboard alongside all the other dogs and cats and one lizard. And I thought to myself, what a brilliant idea, because now that their dog's face is on a skateboard, they might want to buy one of these skateboards. Like, they, they, I involved you in the process, right? Name one big brand right now that's doing anything like that. They, they won't. Your dog will never be on uh, an Enjoy board or a Baker board ever. And, and, and if it ever does happen, you're going to pay, you're going to pay $95 for it versus mine being sold for well at the end they were they were selling for $28 so I was just trying to get rid of them at the end my boards were selling for $28 and I still could barely get rid of them so anyways uh my thought process was your dog is on this you know you might buy one to skateboard on just to support and you might buy one to put on your wall so you can remember man's best friend your best friend and by now half those dogs are dead and you know what it is now, now people want to buy a skate. Well, I, my dog, I, listen, I, I sent you a picture of my dog and I know, I know you spent, you know, $5,000 printing all the boards and getting them manufactured and, and shipped to you. I know you spent all that money because you had a dream, you know, to, to, to build something off of the sport that's given you so much. I know that you just were chasing your dreams, but I didn't have the $35 for the three years that it was on sale. But now that my dog's dead, Maybe you can do a special a special delivery just for me? Yeah, I'm going to do a special delivery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll change everything because you didn't want to support uh, a, a skateboarder. It's one of those things and and I went on this rant the other day. I said I will never ever ever do any business related to skateboarding ever again because skateboarders gonna be skateboarders. Skateboarders is gonna be skaters. You know, that why would they ever support someone chasing their dream, giving them an affordable product, at, like at a decent price that's great quality? Why would they ever support that? When they can when they can go on the barracks and buy a rock, a piece of concrete uh, for uh, 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 literally buying trash. Like D Steve Barrett wipes his ass, balls up his shit paper, and puts it on and signs it and you motherfuckers are gonna support that shit until you die but god forbid i try to do something anyways uh i just wanted to go off on that rant 
about uh you know just kind of choosing who you want to support i mean listen maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe you just wanted some millionaire to be a little bit more of a millionaire and you know what that is fine by me far be it for me to judge you but a little support would have been nice i will never ever do anything skate related as far as like business ever again you know what i'm gonna do mind my fucking business skate skate in my backyard on my little skateboards that i have left over and you know you want to know what i this this is gonna blow your mind this is gonna blow your mind uh in the middle of last year i saw revive i i signed up for their newsletter and revive said uh buy one deck get one half off i said fuck yeah i went and bought two right away i bought two right away and uh i paid for them paid in full you know uh, i didn't buy any grip tape i think they come with grip tape but i didn't i didn't i didn't go above and beyond i bought two skateboards and I'm like, you know what i know these guys i know andy and brian and everyone who's involved in their operation you know it's just a skateboarder trying to chase his dreams uh his 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 warehouse is also a skate park where all of his friends are invited to skate his employees are all his close friends that also skate and 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 family of of those friends i think brian ames mom works there or something like like yeah sounds like something i would like to support i mean i could i could go support some other skate brand you know where there's a bunch of sales reps in an office typing away in a cubicle a couple guys that have never skated uh three hispanic dudes in the warehouse that don't speak english have never skated that, that, that are that are pushing around a uh, a, a cart you know a hydraulic uh, uh what do you call it? pallet jack pulling those around i could go support that shit sure and pay extra or i could support my friends and uh and that's what i did um this, the story kind of backfires on me because i'm trying to support my friends the story backfires on me because when they packed my my order they saw that it was my name and then they refunded me the money and then they sent me two extra skateboards for free and then with a note that said your money's no good here and yet another example of skateboarders supporting one another. So, you know, I, I will always respect those guys, uh, not for that, but for just, you know, chase your dreams. It started, motherfucker started his business in the basement, just like me. I started my, my skate brand on the carpet of my living room. You know what I mean? And uh, and it, it baffles me why, why people, like that's not, that's not something a skateboarder would support. Why would they do that when they can go spend their $90 on the exact same thing and, and make some rich guy richer? Whatever. Whatever. Moving on. Um, <laughs> actually, this kind of falls into my next topic. I think all pro skaters should have health insurance from their their sponsor, from their main uh, board or shoe sponsor. And some of them probably do, but most of them definitely don't. And my problem with that is that... For a lot of these big brands, if you're a pro skater for their company, you don't get health insurance. But again, if you're a sales rep and you put on a suit and tie and you show up to your cubicle every day to uh, to negotiate bigger deals with, with skate shops around the world, you, you, the employee, you get health insurance. The person jumping down the stairs, no health insurance. I think, uh, once again, another another issue with just like, I don't, I don't know if it's greed or... Or maybe, maybe, maybe there's a logistics problem that I don't know about. You know, may, certainly there could be something like a puzzle piece that I'm missing. But um, yeah, just just one of the one of my issues, man. Anyways, um, does anyone know what is that? Uh, what is that martial art? What is that martial art where it's like you standing up and you you grab the people by their gi and you flip them over your shoulder? It's not jujitsu. Uh, uh what, what is that one again it's like you, you throw them and you stand and you throw them. i think ronda rousey was an olympic champion in this sport does anyone remember what that martial art is dietrich and roly oh it's judo you don't know how big my dick is when it goes in your mouth <laughs> got your ass again you motherfuckers always fall for my shit anyways last night what did i do last night i uh man we went to the bar i gambled uh 10 bucks i won 20 so i i made i made 10 dollars. i was like oh boy cool uh my buddy nick sat down and uh he he's playing nickels right so he's betting 
uh, 40 cents. So what is it? Eight nickels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 40 cents a hand. He hits an insane eight out of eight in Kino, wins $2,500, man. I am so happy and jealous. I was happy and jealous. Bro, there was a year. I used to go to this bar called Bourbon Street. It was a bar themed after New Orleans Bourbon Street. You know, there's a bunch of like half naked chicks on the walls. If you if you win like on a slot machine, they'll, they'll give you beads and shit. And uh, there actually was also arcade games. COVID killed that. There was arcade games where the arcade games would give you tickets. And then you count the tickets. And with those tickets, kind of like Dave and Buster's or Chuck E. Cheese, you could win uh, like Golden Knights gear. Or sports gear. You could get a, a Raiders jersey or a Golden Knights shirt or Golden Knights patch or hat or something like that. And uh, every time you buy a drink, they give you tokens. So, motherfucker, I'm going to buy the drink anyway, right? Give me the tokens. It, instead of paying for tokens, it's like it's like Dave and Buster's, but I get free alcohol. And there's slot machines. And they have a big sports wall. So, uh, I remember we used to go there quite a bit. And I would win money. You know, like maybe one, listen, I'm not a big time gambler. If I gamble a lot in one day, I gamble 40 bucks. I would go there every Friday, gamble 40 bucks. And I remember every other Friday, I would usually leave there with 80 bucks. And it felt like every other week. Um, now, I'm still gambling 40 bucks. Well, here's what I do. I usually gamble 20 bucks on Wednesday and 20 bucks on Friday. And I don't gamble anymore. Because, you know, it's, it's kind of a bad habit. You're likely to lose. I haven't won more than $8 in like six months. I'm sitting next to a guy that plays 40 cents and wins $2,500. Good for you, man. You deserve it. What else happened yesterday? Uh, for the second time in my life, I went to the shooting range, the Clark County shooting range, the outdoor range. I've been to a handful of indoor ranges. Um, I live in the desert. So if I want to go shoot a gun, I can drive out. I can drive out in the middle of the desert walk out there in the middle of nowhere and go shoot that's usually what i do it's more fun you're not supposed to drink a beer when you're doing that but you know what you're in the middle of nowhere who cares go out there have some fun bring bring an xbox you know sh shoot a bunch of junk also clean up your trash when i i rarely clean up my brass but i always clean up my trash you know you don't want to be a litter bug anyways i go to the actual outdoor range where there's all these rules there's these range instructors you know, stay behind the red line. Stay behind the yellow line. Ear protection on. Everyone must have eye protection. Do not cross the red line under any circumstance. If one, if one shooter calls ceasefire, you must cease firing immediately. If it gets too any, uh, do not approach the uh, if, if you're If you leave your water on the table during a ceasefire, I will grab the water. Do not approach the table. You know, all these rules. Uh, I was zeroing in. Uh, so I, I had, uh, well, I have multiple ARs, but I had one. That I tried to zero one day and uh, I just I fucked up my uh, my red dot. I just fucked it up. Okay, I didn't. Here's my thing. I thought that the knob on the right meant up down. I thought the knob on the top meant left right. I, I mixed them up. Whatever. Fucked up my red dot one day. Anyways, uh, we went out there to zero it. Got it zeroed. And my buddy Nick, all the same person who who won the twenty five hundred dollars only hours later. He bought a, uh, I think it's called a Springfield, uh, some type of bullpup. It might be called a Hellion. I could be wrong about that. But a, with a bullpup, the uh, the magazine sits behind the trigger, basically, right? I've never shot one. I've never held one. First off, motherfucker, all the, all the things I'm used to shooting ARs, now I've had multiple ARs. I've probably shot dozens and dozens of AR-15s. I have one friend who owns 40, 40 AR-15s. You know, great rifle. Uh, I decided, like, when I first got into guns, I was like, kind of wanted to be an AK guy, but then I shot an AR, and I said, you know what, Th this is for me. This is what I like. I like my gun to be like a Lego, right? If I want to take one piece off, put one piece on, if I want to change something out, all I got to do is I got my AR wrench, I got everything I need, I can I can fix things, I can replace things, I can, I just, I, I understand it more. Versus, you know, the AK falls apart, uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta get on YouTube. You know what I mean? I got to jump on YouTube and be like, what the hell is this piece? What the hell is it? Where did this piece come from? So anyways, I shot uh, my first bullpup. I had no idea where none of the notches are. I didn't know how to release my mag. I didn't know how to fucking lock the bolt. Couldn't figure out a goddamn thing about this gun. And it felt weird when I, when I held it. I didn't like it. It's been my dream for a long time to shoot a bullpup. They, they seem like the most efficient type of rifle. Anyways, I put five rounds through it. 
And uh, I couldn't hit a goddamn thing, by the way. I was so not used to this rifle at all. Couldn't hit a goddamn thing. But um, that was cool. I, I, I think that that's... <laughs> it's, a, it's a gun version of Never Meet Your Heroes. Okay, it's a, t it's a type of gun that I always really wanted to shoot. I finally get to shoot it and I go, meh. Not impressed. Not impressed. Cool gun. Very cool. Not impressed. So uh, just, just sharing with you guys something fun that I got to experience. Speaking of that, today is Friday. Did you guys watch what skate video came out today on my channel? Uh, a friend of mine, fellow skateboarder, also fellow Twitch streamer, Floppy Jimmy. A lot of you guys might not know who that is if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, if you're listening to this. By the way, you can listen to this podcast on Podbean, on iTunes, on Spotify, anywhere where you can get podcasts, even a podcast app. If you have an iPhone, also probably on iTunes, it's everywhere. You guys should listen to this goddamn podcast. Tell a friend about the podcast. Anyways, Floppy Jimmy comes over, he hangs out for uh for one day. We went skateboarding. Went to the bar for a minute, then we went skateboarding. Beat his goddamn ass at pool, and then we go. Uh, he's a really good skateboarder, and I always forget because I watch his program, his Twitch show. It's basically a show, very entertaining. He's doing very well on Twitch, proud of him. Also, I, I forget that he's also a very, very talented skateboarder. Super good. We sponsored back in the day. You know, uh, we have a lot of mutual friends that I didn't know that we did. In fact, he went from my house in Las Vegas to Arizona to hang out with pro skater Jaws and, and, and that crew. But I also forgot that he was he was an Arizona guy anyways. Uh, just, just general traveling skateboarder. And he shredded the ramp. And I'm going to come out with a video either in one week or two weeks because he came up with this idea. He said, do you think on your backyard ramp we could do 100 tricks? I said, no. I said, there's no fucking way. We have to do 100 different tricks on the mini ramp. So you think like front 50-50, back 50-50. Front 5-0, back 5-0. Front Smith, back Smith. Front tail, back tail. Okay, we've only that's only eight. So at some point, when you start getting in like the 30s and 40s, you completely run out of tricks and uh, we shredded hard. I have not skated that hard in, uh, I haven't skated that hard in possibly years, at least one year. In the past 365 days, I have not skated that hard. So we are grinding for these tricks and, uh, and Jamie killed it. He got some, some blunt variations, right? Kick flip blunt. Blunt kickflip, blunt board stall, blunt rock and roll, blunt no stall, blunt 5-0, blunt grind, blunt pivot fakie, uh, blunt kickflip, kickflip blunt, blunt shove, uh, blunt hand grab. And, and it was like, dude, this is, this is cool because you forget, you watch a guy on Twitch. I think this is what happens to a lot of people with me on YouTube. You watch me on Ninja Review and you forget that I've been skating for 24 fucking years. You don't remember that, you know, or, or maybe you're new. Maybe you're new to the channel, or maybe you just haven't seen seen what happens or whatever. So a lot of people go like, oh, you're you're over here. You're critiquing fucking Nija. Well, like, what do you know? I'd say, oh, I know that I have 4,000 videos on, on YouTube, 5,000 videos. I know that, I know that uh, 900 of those videos at least are of me skateboarding. So if, if you just click the name, you, you know how you're watching this on, on YouTube? Like I'm saying this, if you were watching me on YouTube, you click that name of the, of the person who runs the channel, just click that real quick, just a little, little, little click, not even a double click. I'll, I'll let you go with a single, one single click. And then you can see that yes, I, I do skateboard, I have skateboarded, I've dedicated a huge amount of my life to this. Um, but I feel like I do the same thing. With Floppy Jimmy, I watch this guy. He goes on Twitch. He plays little Pokemon games and dances around, does his little slut walk, uh, plays his little games and plays guitar like a fucking loser. And I forget like, oh shit, you're actually a really good like down ass skater. So you guys can check out that video on Twitch today was just a part of the session. Eventually I'll get the VOD from him and I'll edit all 100 tricks. You guys can see us do, uh, do all 100 tricks, man. Uh, new camera issue. We're, we're really going for this new camera to, to get it working. Uh, I'm, I'm changing subjects, by the way. I'm trying to get this new camera to get going on on Twitch, but it's I'm just having such a hard time, and that other computer is so old. We pretty much already talked about that. Uh, what else is going on? Well, 
If you guys remember, maybe sometime in the middle of last year, I watched a documentary on lettuce and how lettuce can give you E. coli, especially romaine lettuce, and how th there's many people that get sick and some even die every year from eating lettuce. So I said, you know what? From now on, forever, I'm only going to buy lettuce by the head. I'm not going to buy a mixed bag of lettuce. But you know what happened this week? <laughs> Riveting stuff. T uh, tell us, Steve. Tell us more about the lettuce. Tell us this insane story about the lettuce. It, it, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> so anyways... Uh, I, I used to buy these heads of lettuce. I bought a salad spinner. I have to wash. I wash the lettuce, take it apart, wash it, uh, save it for later. And I've been doing that. But I found I found that, you know what? It's been time consuming. So I also, motherfucker, bad news. Okay. I'm, I hate to be a, a wasteful Wimbledon. <laughs> I couldn't think of a name that started with W. A wasteful Wendy. I didn't want to be a wasteful Wendy. Wendy's nuts go into your mouth. I didn't want to be a wasteful uh, <laughs> walrus. Uh, I buy the head of lettuce. I let one go bad the other day. I bought a whole ass head of lettuce from the Mexican market and it went seven days and that fucker started to get soft and change colors. And I was like, nope, can't eat this now. And I was disappointed in myself. I said, you know what? The only reason I didn't eat this lettuce is because I was too lazy to simply wash it off in the salad spinner and put it back into a bowl. I was too lazy to do that. It's a five minute process, if that. Three minute process probably. So I let it go bad. You know what I said? I'm not going to let that happen again. And uh, it, I, I have a big problem with like procrastination anyways. Uh, putting things off. If you, if you guys have seen like my fucking living room, there's just shit everywhere, right? Like there's just junk everywhere. It's like, a, like I would be a hoarder if I had more like belongings. I don't have a lot of belongings, but the ones I do have are hoarded everywhere. Nothing's organized. I really... um. Should do better with that. Anyways, I let the head of lettuce go bad. And then yesterday I broke down and bought, I bought the bagged, the bagged lettuce. And I said, you know what? I'm going to eat every goddamn bit of this. Also, last week I ate really unhealthy. So I bought like a light uh, dressing. I think it's Italian dressing or Russian dressing. Italian. I'm usually getting Caesar dressing. And I looked at the back of that fucker. I said, damn, this is not healthy for you. Then again, you know what else is not healthy for me? Eating 25 chicken wings for breakfast. That's also not healthy. So trying to make these little tiny steps into getting healthier. Anyways, what I was, basically I'm bringing up this whole topic to say I'm disappointed in myself. Disappointed in myself for letting the lettuce go bad. But then I got to thinking about it like, E. coli, am I gonna get E. coli? So here's my new plan. In order to make me, force me to eat more greens, here's what I'll do. I'll buy the head of lettuce, I'll wash it when I feel like I have energy. But when I, when I'm like, when I feel like it might be a lazy week, I'll buy the, the I'll buy the mixed, the mixed already cut lettuce. Okay, I know. Exciting. <laughs> Exciting podcast. Guys talking about lettuce. Okay, moving on. Anyways, trying to get healthier um, a little bit at a time. That's all I got for the podcast. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about movies that I've been watching. I started a Netflix series called Three Body Problem. Really high rated on Rotten Tomatoes, high rated on Netflix. I watched it. And unless you're some type of, unless you like space, like like space, like stars and Space bullshit, man. I don't, I don't know. Satellites. Fuck, I don't know, man. Space, space shit. Unless you like space shit, I would say don't watch it. I, I can't even name any, any space things. Um, solar system. Galaxy. If you, like, if, you, if you use words like that in your day-to-day -day life, you might like the Netflix uh, series Three Body Problem. As for me, I watched the whole thing. I must have wasted 10 hours of my life. Not a fan. Didn't really like it. Didn't really care for it. If you, if you like space, you might like it. If you don't like space, avoid it. I tell you guys this at the end of every podcast to let you know what I've been watching. Uh, so you can either watch it or avoid it. Do not fucking watch it. Do not fucking watch it. I also clicked something called Baby Driver. And basically, it's like the bisexual brother of Fast and Furious. And my God, I watched about 20 minutes of it. I had to turn it off. It was so motherfucking stupid. And it's, it's baby driver. It's, there's, no, there's no baby involved. There's a, the, the, the star, his name is Baby. And he's a driver. He, he helps people commit crimes by driving. Like Fast and the Furious. It is the worst movie. I think, I think it might be made for babies. Because like if I was seven or eight years old, 
I'd probably like it just because of the vroom, vroom, vroom noises. But as an adult watching Baby Driver, it's fucking stupid. So I don't know where Netflix is. Like the thought that someone made that movie and they and they make more money than me is infuriating because it is fucking terrible. Um, yeah, don't, never watch that movie. Zero out of ten. I I got twenty minutes in and gave it a zero. Um, that's it. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you have nasty feet, like me, I have bad heels and big nasty toes. Just just an all around nasty foot. Just a foot ass. Just a nasty foot ass. Na foot ass. Um, I I suggest you invest. On Amazon, they're they're cheap. I got a cheese grater for my foot. It will never touch cheese. It's only for feet. And I cheese grated the fuck out of my foot last night, and I feel like a whole new man today. I took a shower, got out of the shower, cheese grated my foot. My God. I grated it over the toilet. I looked in the toilet. I said, damn, that's, that's half of my foot. And I flushed my foot away. God damn it. They got places here. In uh, in shops and malls and even casinos, where you you pay, you pay to put your foot in a fish tank, and supposedly the fish eats your dead skin. First off, I don't even know how to, where to begin. Gross. For, uh, I don't. First off, a fish tank. Gross. Second off, a fish eating my body. Gross. Third off, fish are gross. Fourth off, you, you know what a fish, you know what a room filled with fish tanks smells like? Gross. Also, how about this, bitch? You are putting your foot into foot water of a thousand other people. I walked up and down in Binion's Casino, Fremont Street, Las Vegas, and other places throughout Las Vegas, maybe in the world. I don't know if this is a worldwide thing or a local thing. You think they're changing the water? First off, you know how much what? We're at water crisis here in Nevada. You're not even allowed to water your lawns except on Sunday and at night. There's there's a water shortage here. Unless I'm unless I'm building a skateboard ramp, in which case it's going to be a, a a crazy monsoon rain season. Other than that, so first off, I walk past. Here's my thing: if they were changing that water when the store's closed, and I put my eyes up against the glass, I look in the store. Why aren't the tanks empty? Oh, I'll tell you why. They're recycling foot ass water from that from the last. 400 days, 17 years, as Chef Jean-Pierre would say. They've been using the same foot water for 17 years. Also, fish are dirty, slimy, and nasty. You know what You know what fish do in their house? They shit. Fish, you're going to put your foot into some fish shit. Don't do it. People, people act like it's some type of luxury thing. It's not. You know, also in Las Vegas, we have things called oxygen bars. Have you heard of an oxygen bar? You, <laughs> I, I can't wait. If, if there's someone in here that has never heard of an oxygen bar, I can't wait to break this down for you. If, if there's anyone here who's never heard of that, I can't wait to break it down for you. You sit down, you put on like a mask, and you breathe, wait for it, oxygen. That's, and you pay, you pay them money. You pay them money to sit down, and you breathe oxygen. But here's what they do. All around, all around it, they have all these fish tanks. They have fish tanks surrounding the oxygen with bubbles going through the fish tank of multiple colors. A bl green fish tank, blue fish tank, red, yellow. No, no fish are in there. It's just, it's just a design, right? It's just a tank with bubbles going up. It just makes it look, it makes it look scientific. Like, oh, damn, I'm breathing that? No, you're not breathing that shit. You're breathing something out of a tank that's below the counter. No, you're not breathing that. That's water, idiot. That's not oxygen. Second off... I'm pretty sure they they say that the oxygen that you're breathing there is more like pure. Maybe. Guess what? <sighs> Look at that. Look what I can do. <sighs> Look at me. <sighs> check check it out. <sighs> Look, I'll gi I'll give you a big one. <sighs> I'll give you a little one. <laughs> Look at that. I pulled it off. I I pulled it off. Jesus Christ. People pay for that. It's ridiculous. Anyways, that's all I got for the podcast today. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Uh, man, I had a 
I had a rough day today, but I'm drinking a beer. I usually don't drink beer on the podcast. Today we're drinking a beer because I'm stressed out a little bit. But you know what? I feel a little bit better after doing this podcast. I feel like everyone should feel a little bit better after I do a podcast, which is why you should tell a friend about the podcast or support it in some way. You could subscribe. You could follow. You could donate bits. You could donate money. You can give me a tip. You can give me a tip. I go to the bar, I give the bartender a tip all the time. If I'm at a casino and somebody brings me a drink, if you're gambling, you get a free drink, I give them a tip. I do it all the time. If you're at Subway, uh, not, well, maybe not Subway. Eh, maybe not Subway. If I'm at Outback Steakhouse, at the end of my meal, I leave them a tip. If I'm at Applebee's, at the end of the meal, a tip. Small tip. You guys can leave me a fucking tip, you know. I kill myself out here trying to entertain you guys fucking six days a week. But you don't have to. Money's tight. Joe Biden economy, you buy one egg, it costs $9. It's only going to get worse. So I can understand that some of you guys are short on cash, but what you're not short on is oxygen. And you know what oxygen does? It goes through your lungs and it comes out of your mouth and you can say words. And with those words, you can tell a friend about the podcast and it's free. You can tell a friend about the podcast. Twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. I also got a YouTube channel. Check that out. We got Wait for Carl has donated 100 bits and El Gordas Edition 2 Yipa, has donated 15 bits. I appreciate all of you guys for hanging out. We do this podcast every single Friday right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time right here on twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. The podcast is ending, but the broadcast will continue. I hope everyone is having a great weekend to be safe out there. And as I always Say, don't drink too much. Don't drink too little. (laughs) Judo. Judo know about my big old dick.